Today I'm going to tell you a story that involves the worst single killing of U.S. police officers in the 20th century, and it all took place in the four states area. Today's story takes place in the early 1930s during the Great Depression. It's often referred to as the public enemy era. You've probably heard about the famous criminals from this era. People like John Dillinger, Babyface Nelson, Machine Gun Kelly, Pretty Boy Floyd, and even Bonnie and Clyde. While the bad guys from today's story would never receive the same notoriety for their crimes, their actions were terrible, if not even worse than most of the others. The Young Brothers consisted of Paul, Harry, and Jennings. They were well known to law enforcement officers of Southwest Missouri in the 1920s as mainly small-time thieves. Each had served time in the Missouri State Penitentiary for burglary and theft. Jennings and Paul had also served time at Leavenworth. They had become household names, but most local authorities considered them to be nonviolent until roughly June 2nd of 1929. It's when Harry Young and an accomplice murdered Mark No, a city marshal of Republic, Missouri. Following the murder, the brothers would flee to Texas for roughly two and a half years. They would establish a grand-scale auto theft ring, later described by the FBI as one of the largest of its kind. By the end of 1931, Harry and Jennings decided it was time to visit their family farm back in Missouri. On January 2nd, 1932, Sheriff Marcel Hendricks of Greene County received reliable information indicating that two of the Young Brothers were at the family's farm near Brookline, which is a small village not far from Springfield, Missouri. Hendricks quickly assembled a posse of lawmen and set out for the farm to go after and arrest the two Young Brothers. There were roughly 10 officers in the posse. All of them had handguns, no other weapons, and no spare ammunition. The officers would arrive at the farmhouse and order the brothers to come out. They would receive no response. They threw tear gas into the house. They would receive no response. At that point, Hendricks and his deputy sheriff decided to kick down the back door and enter the home. When they did so, the two brothers, one armed with a shotgun, the other with a rifle, opened fire from inside the house. Both Sheriff Hendricks and Deputy Mashburn fell mortally wounded. The officers outside began shooting into the windows of the house while the brothers continued to pour deadly fire on the exposed policemen. Three more officers would be murdered from this gunfire, Tony Oliver, Sid Meadows, and Charles Hauser. At this point, the surviving police officers were out of ammunition and they were pinned down. They were forced to abandon their dead and dying comrades and flee for their lives. Unknown to them, Officer Crosswhite was still alive and uninjured as he was crouching behind a storm cellar at the rear of the house. Once the brothers realized Crosswhite was still around, one of them pinned him down with a rifle while the other crept up from behind him and killed him with a shotgun blast to the back of the head. The killers took money and weapons from the fallen policemen and fled to Houston, Texas. After the murder of six officers, a national manhunt immediately commenced, and the Young Brothers were quickly tracked to a rented room where they had fled to Houston, Texas. Houston police officers entered the home on January 5th and discovered the brothers had already retreated to an interior bathroom. They called on the men to surrender, but were met with gunfire. At that point, the officers returned fire. There was a period of silence, and then several more shots were heard. A voice called out, We're dead. Come on in. They would find Jennings Young dead, and Harry Young mortally wounded from multiple gunshot wounds. The guns taken from the murdered lawmen in Brookline were the same ones found on the bodies of the Young brothers. The coroner's office in Houston concluded that the brothers had shot each other in a suicide pact to avoid capture. There has been questioning of this version of events though, with many suspecting that the officers involved had in fact fired the fatal shots. The Young Brothers Massacre was one of the events that persuaded law enforcement in the United States to take a more professional 
and cautious approach to armed standoff situations in the future. A monument bearing the names of the six slain officers stands today in front of the police headquarters building in Springfield and in front of the Greene County Courts building. The murderers, Jennings and Harry Young, are buried in the same plot with the same grave marker at the Fairview Cemetery in Joplin, Missouri. It's definitely a tragic but important event in the history of the four states area. I hope you all enjoyed today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time.